Educational research has many precepts that they're talking about in terms of having an effective classroom. One of those is that you have to have multiple types of activities. This is especially important if you have a block schedule. They say you should have at least three completely separate types of activities. Now in a normal class, I'm not a block room teacher, but I have about a 45 minute period and I like to follow the words of a phenomenal professor that I heard at Princeton. He was the Princeton professor of chemistry, Hubert Allier. And what Hubert Allier had to say teaching even at a prestigious college like Princeton, he had to say that you have to have momentary lapses, that these students only learn in small clips and you have to have some breaks, but you have to make sure that these breaks are still educational. For me in my classroom, I follow this by using demonstrations, songs, or other kinds of activities that you are still getting your students to think. Let me show you one of those. I have an arrow here. Did you know that there are chemical reactions out there where they start over here as a reactant and they go over here to a product? And that's all they do. They go from the reactant to the product. They go from here over to here. But as you progress through chemistry, you have to realize that there are some reactions that start over here and they go backward. They're reversible. So you have to watch out for that. You have to watch out for those reversible reactions. But what you really have to watch out for as you get to second semester are the reactions that go both ways. We call this equilibria. And you have reactions that start over here, go over here, and they go back and they go both ways. And then you have to watch out for those precipitates, those substances that are going to settle to the ground and be extra cautious of those gases that form that are lighter than air. And so they're just going to rise up off there. So where would I use this in my classroom? I have got an activity here that's a momentary lapse, but yet it is important to get the students thinking. Lateral thinking or other types of directional thinking are real important to get a good developed student. And I've tried this with many, many students from grades, you know, six or seven up through advanced professors in inorganic chemistry. And what we want to do is, I'm going to show you, I've got an arrow going this way, and on the other side, I've got an arrow going this way. And what I want you to do is to try to predict what direction the arrow is on the back. And this is trying to get the student to think. And I've had people almost fighting about this, saying, no, the arrow has to be this way. No, it has to be that way. And I've had an advanced inorganic professor get this wrong. Now, where, once again, does this connect? You're developing the thinking patterns, but you're also strongly developing spatial, S-P-A-T-I-A-L, spatial thinking, which is essential in engineering and organic chemistry. They have to think and they have to picture things. So I have an arrow here and an arrow on the back. What kind of direction do you think? As I gradually turn it, there's nothing gimmicky about it. It's a downward arrow. Were you right? So what I have is an arrow going off to my left on this side, and on the back, there's another arrow. There's nothing gimmicked about them. They don't move. It's just by the pivot points. So if I have my hands at the opposite ends on this direction where my right hand is higher, and as I pivot it, the arrow will consistently go the same direction. Now, I use my glasses as a misdirection where I'll come up here and then I'll just go over here and come over here. And now, note what's happened. My hands have been positioned in the other diagonal. Look what happens. Well, what do you think? I have an arrow going down. What do you think when I'm going to pivot it along this diagonal? You're right. It goes the other direction. So what do you think now? I'm on the same pivot point, it goes the opposite direction. And on this diagonal, it goes the opposite directions. So what I have done is developed a routine, and if you want to try this, students really get a challenge out of this, and it gets some thought processes. You should try to practice something like this in front of a mirror. But when you have it like this, with the right hand higher, it goes the same direction. The opposite direction, well, take a look. I'm going back here, it's pointing off this way, and when I'm with this right hand higher, it's still going to go the same direction. 
But when I go the opposite way, it changes direction. Now, if I have an arrow just going back and forth, left and right, how in the world did I get an arrow going down? I'm going to keep my hands here and just turn it upside down. And there you see the arrow going down. And guess what? I've got my hands in a natural position to pivot it, and it goes up. And it's real essential, even if you have these momentary lapses in your classroom, where you need your students to take a breather. Take that breather with something like puzzles in the classroom or things like this, where they are still thinking. They might not consider it thinking because they're having fun. So try something, this in your, try something like this in your classroom. Enjoy it. Thank you.